Well, this presentation is based on material that's made public by the Software Engineering Institute, and we're using terms like CMMI, Frameworks, Scampi, and these are trademarks and uh, um, marks of uh, the Software Engineering Institute. So um, I recommend uh, you anybody that has uh, uh, an interest in uh, CMMI for Services to buy the book CMMI for Services, Guidelines for Superior Services, by Eileen Forrester, Brandon Buteau, and uh, Sandra Shrum. And uh, from there, it, there is a lot of material that I, uh, I'm quoting in this presentation. Um, if you're familiar or with the CMMI, this slide might look old. Uh, this is uh, the famous uh, five-stage maturity levels of the capability maturity model integration that, uh, the, CM that the Software Engineering Institute has been um, developing and enhancing since uh, the year 2000 and perhaps started before. Um, there is an initial level, uh, which is con considered to be maturity level one, and uh, you don't require anything to be at the initial level, only to recognize that uh, you're doing business in the area of uh, the constellation, the adequate constellation, which in this case would be services. In those cases, process is unpredictable, it's poorly controlled and reactive. Uh, I like to think that successful organizations at the initial level, what really have is uh, um, undocumented processes which people know by uh, rehearsing them through many, many uh, instantiations of them. At the level at level two, maturity level two, the process is characterized for a typical span of work, and uh, still is often reactive. When something changes, something goes wrong, something is uh, uh, a little bit outside the scope of what we've been doing before. We uh, tend to uh, run after the uh, fire and fix um, the problem and go back to what we were doing without thinking about what in the process could have been changed to prevent that happening. Maturity level three is called the fine level, and the process is then characterized for the organization. We usually take this to see um, uh, the knowledge sharing at the organizational level. <clears throat> Quantitatively managed is when you stabilize your processes so well that uh, the control uh, can be uh, exercised statistically. And then you completely uh, understand the way your processes work, the capability you have to supply your customers with uh, their desired products or services. And at the highest level of them all, level five, an organization has an emphasis on continuous improvement that is based on the statistical knowledge that they've created at the previous level. So those are the five stage maturity levels, and we're going to go over this in many different ways, and uh, it's going to be like 10 to 15 minutes of presentation on CMMI. So those that are familiar with the CMMI, please bear with me, and then I'm going to jump into services itself. I'm not assuming an in-depth knowledge of the CMMI at all in the rest of the presentation. That's why I'm making uh, this uh, <clears throat> first part uh, a presentation of what the um, CMMI looks like. So there are no process areas that you have to comply with if you want to be appraised uh, through the CMMI using a SCAMPI, but uh, they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight process areas that you have to comply with when you want to be appraised at the maturity level two. That's the managed level that you see there, and only one of them is uh, um, related to uh, exclusively related to the service constellation. You have to manage your requires, requirements, you have to plan your work, you have to monitor and control your work. If you have uh, suppliers, you have to manage their, the agreements with them in uh, a win-win uh, uh, proposition. Uh, you have to uh, create an information system that measures, that allows you to measure uh, and analyze the results of those measurements. You have to assure that uh, your processes are being followed and your products follow standards, and you have to keep track of all your assets. That will be configuration management. Service delivery, then, is the only addition from uh, those that uh, 
those trust areas that are common in uh, the development model. And it deals with uh, delivering the service. It's very, very simple. It's the most elementary uh, service uh, activity you can have. Produce the service and uh, uh, deliver it to the customer. There's a bigger change at the defined level. In the defined level, as we mentioned, uh, the focus is on the organizational knowledge sharing. And you have organizational process focus. I'm going to the uh, first bullet in black, and which would be the seventh bullet if uh, you are colorblind, pardon me. Organizational process definition is uh, where you, and organizational training, all these three act together as the uh, putting the emphasis on gathering knowledge, process focus, saving it, process definition, and training, and uh, diffusing it. Integrated work management, which comes after, is the way the projects have to capture the knowledge from the organization, transform it into actual work, and uh, give it back to the uh, repositories. Risk management uh, speaks for itself, and decision analysis and resolution is about formalizing certain type of decisions. So <clears throat> the additions here are in replacement of uh, five engineering process areas, requirements development, technical solution, product integration, verification, and validation, which are not in this uh, constellation, in this model of the CMMI. Capacity and availability management is uh, one of the uh, nicest uh, propositions that I've heard in many years for the CMMI. It's a beautiful process area that uh, allows you to understand uh, what is it that uh, I want to do and am I able to do it. And that capacity and availability management is a wonderful transition from the defined level to the quantitatively managed level. Service continuity is what happens if, uh, how do I gracefully degrade my system in case of a catastrophe? Incident resolution and prevention, we all have incidents, and uh, okay, how do we treat them? Uh, which are the ones that need to be prevented uh, in the future? And this is the process area that deals with that. Service system transition <coughs> is about uh, being able to change parts of the system or components of the system and still be functional. Uh, if you're a 24 by 7 uh, shop, you know what I'm talking about. You need to plan and uh, rehearse this before uh, transitioning changes in the system, especially the big changes. Strategic service management addresses the idea of, uh, is this all we can do? Should we do more? What do our customers want? Are we incomplete in some sense in our business niche? And service system development is uh, uh, an extension that uh, allows you to use uh, components of uh, the engineering practices in order to develop uh, your own service system. And uh, we'll look at a little bit more into the first uh, five, and uh, I will drop service system development for those that are really interested. I recommend that you go and read about it. So what you see here is now the capability by maturity levels expressed in terms of a distribution first. You can see that uh, this uh, uh, at level one, the probability of attaining your target is uh, very small, whether your target is uh, cost, uh, time to market, or um, quality, it usually, uh, what happens is that you reach your uh, um, project late with overruns and uh, you turn out uh, finally uh, using part of the delivery time to uh, make it, uh, you know, make it good to your customer. In level two, you got better plans and your com commitments are more reasonable. You still are not looking very good, but uh, you kind of, you know, disciplined your team, and you can see that the curve now is not as uh, um, your bell curve.